Joining us now is Murad Lalu, a San Francisco restaurant owner who has family there in Marrakesh, and Caroline Holt, global head of operations for the International Federation of the Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies. Thank you both so much for taking the time. Um, Murad, thank you for getting up so early to be part of this. I know it's been a probably very stressful few days for you. How's your family doing, and what are they telling you about what happened? Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, my family, uh, thankfully, is very safe. Uh, they were not in the house when the quake happened. Uh, but from my communications with them, uh, the devastation is rampant. Um, everybody's affected. Everybody knows somebody who either lost some, some family member or some friend or lost a home. Um, uh, the situation is very dire. Um, and I don't even think these horrible images that are shown on TV and on social media uh, tell the real story of what's happening. Um, in terms of uh, human lives that are lost, the number is climbing. Uh, officially, it's around 2,500 people who mm -hmm. have lost their lives. But I think at the end of the day, when you talk to people on the ground, they know for a fact that there are people that are still buried under the rubble, um, people that used to make sounds that are not making sounds anymore. So they cannot mm -hmm. be declared officially dead until they are pulled out from under the rubble. Um, so that number I'm expecting to climb. Um, I've been in contact with the U.S. Embassy, the Moroccan Embassy in, in Washington, and they're telling me the same thing. Um, I've been in contact with the State Department, and I'm hearing stories that this number will climb significantly um, yeah. when everything is settled. Yeah, we can, we keep holding out hope as especially we see some of these videos of rescues that have taken place and that work continues to try to reach people who may be trapped under the rubble. What goes through your mind, Murad, when you see just how torn apart Morocco is by this historic earthquake? Uh, for me, it's it's really um, it's really hard to watch because I, I grew up in Marrakesh. I'm from Marrakesh, and I, I know these neighborhoods that are shown on, on TV and on the screens all over the place. Um, I can recognize the alleyways. I can uh, the the village that the, your reporter has spoken about, Moulay Ibrahim. Uh, I used to go there pretty much every couple of months, um, so I know what those homes uh, meant to not just the people who lived in them, but also uh, from a cultural perspective. These are remote villages, remote communities. They have their own dialect. They don't even speak the Moroccan dialect. And going there, it always felt like witnessing life from hundreds of years ago um, in real time. And, and that was really special. And, and these are not people who are connected to the world through the internet or Wi-Fi or you know, iPhone or iPads. There are people who live their life sustainably. They grow their own food. They raise their own animals. They have their own schooling systems. They're very, very traditional in their ways. And I'm afraid that is going to be lost, or most of it will be lost. Or at the least, um, they will be displaced where they can't live the way they used to live um, any longer. Yeah. Now, we see the damage is so severe, really, throughout the areas impacted, but it does vary in some images. It appears like some buildings were reduced to dust. I mean, what's your sense of why this earthquake was so, so devastating and so deadly? Um, well, you have to think about it from a different perspective. When these homes and these villages were put up hundreds of years ago, um, thinking about, you know, seismically retrofitting the buildings was not something on their mind. Um, these are adobe buildings. These are, these are buildings that are built to keep people from the heat of the summer and the cold of the winter. So the walls are really thick and they're made with clay and hay and, uh, you know, materials that are not uh, necessary. They're heavy. And when there is an earthquake like this, everything crumbles. There's nothing that will keep the walls up. There's nothing that will keep the ceilings up. And, and Morocco, and especially Marrakesh, has witnessed a, a tremendous growth in tourism and 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 people from other countries loving the country and falling in love with the country and they decided to come and move in and buy homes and and the construction business just bloomed over the last 20 years so there were a lot of homes that were built um, rapidly to, to to you know to accommodate the demand and i think that's that's part of the problem so you have it's a double edged sword where the old homes crumbled because they're old yeah. and the new homes crumbled because you know they're not built in a way that is sustainable
It's all so sad to see. Moran Lalu, thank you so much for taking the time. We wish you and your family all the very best in the recovery process. I appreciate you. Thank you for having me.